which is great to see. This is one of the NASCAR uh, heritage cars that we've got here this weekend. We've got a nice little collection of, of NASCAR. Well, this is, in fact, the one that uh, Jensen Button raced at Le Mans, which was something very, very different, and everyone loved it. When you love the appearance of what everyone was universal oh. about, the sheer grunty sound of the Z01. Uh, Camaro, just brilliant, and I think uh, a lot of people go, can we have a whole class of these next year? Of course we can't, GT3 is going to be the junior class at the mall, but it made a lot of friends. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's the most beautiful sounding engine, isn't it? Yeah. The yeah. car that actually reportedly resulted in, in quite a few complaints. NASCAR were getting several complaints about the unfair advantage that the Chevrolet had in the car. But, uh, you know, you're always going to get teams complaining against each other. We see that plenty of times across the board, especially currently in Formula One. That is a weekday in motor racing anywhere. This is Jensen Button, the 2009 world champion, behind the wheel of his Garage 56 entry to Le Mans this year. It is the unusual garage where we have experimental cars across the board, so they modified this NASCAR from the Camaro that normally takes part in the NASCAR Cup uh, races across America and they made plenty of modifications. One thing they didn't modify was the roar and the sound and having had the privilege to cover that great race, one of the things that allowed you to stay awake was the grunt, the growl and the distinctive noise of that wonderful, wonderful car. It was a great project, it was a popular project and Jensen Button, part of that entry, the 2009 World Champion, having the time of his life at the famous race. He did, and actually, was, I just kept an eye on it, really kept it. I keep an eye on Le Mans, and it's an incredible event, but especially I was like, where's the NASCAR at? What sort of lap time is it doing? And I was actually really, really impressed. And it was actually NASCAR's, they, they competed before, but not since 1976 have they competed or yeah. taken part in Le Mans. And in 1976, they didn't get very far. I don't, I don't think they got cars here and to be able to celebrate 75 years so when uh, nascar began it was the same year that uh, that we saw going out now it's possibly jensen who is driving although we may he may be out in one of the other cars later but this is the latest version of the chevrolet camaro yeah it's the, the zl1 or zl1 as they call it on the other side of the atlantic and this had a, a peculiar a very, very exciting outing in the Le Mans 24 hours. This is a, something that had actually happened for the first time back in 1976, but it wasn't covered in glory. But this uh, run by Hendrick Motorsports, one of the very top teams in the sport. As it rumbles, it rips <laughs> our, past our commentary box. The noise was the thing that hurted so many fans, and I had long-standing colleagues saying, why don't we have a whole class of these at Le Mans next year? Certainly you do wonder about it, because they, they did all those sort of cartoonish things quick, powerful rumbly and with the driver lineup including Jensen Button superstars as well yeah and in fact as we were talking about just now about Shane Van Gisberg and the, uh, the Kiwi taking a win it was in one of these Camaros wasn't it that he did that yeah and he didn't do it from the front he worked his way lap after lap place after place and that you, when someone comes in and rocks the cradle to that extent everyone must be asking themselves questions but uh, right now it's a good choice to have it is a wonderful choice so the Chevy Camaro the ZL1 of this current season are getting more and more bizarre and that's certainly one of them right now we're into a bit of nascar who loves nascar and just listen to the sound of it that's always such a great part of it and uh, this year of course uh, nascar celebrating its 75th year so it's very fitting that uh, this car the zl1 zl1 as you want to call it stateside camaro went and competed the le mans 24 hours completely like unlike anything else and it won armies thousands of pounds thousands of fans because the sheer grunt the noise it made and jensen button is one of the drivers an enormously popular encounter yeah at jensen i had a chat with jensen over the weekend and i said you know how are you finding nascar and he was like yeah it's great it's it's definitely a race discipline that i, I i'm just getting used to still he was like they actively encourage people to 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 basically push through you on the track and he was like that's absolutely fine look he's still a new boy being uh, you know tested for his metal it, absolutely i think it was a baptism of fire when he went out there but he's definitely having a lot of fun <laughs> oh. he's kicking up a bit of dust so for views for cars that are heading up the hill after him that could be a little bit of a challenge and actually watch out for the rs200 that's coming up the uh, the classic rally car uh, because max mccray part of the mccray family the younger uh, part of that McRae family is driving the RS200 up, so if you're seeing that at the moment, um, that's fun to see.
as well to the drifting there that comes slamming on the brakes through Malcolm Corner kicking up so many dust and here we have Jensen Button now. The 2009 world champion who took this car in the garage 56 entry to the 100th edition of Le Mans celebrating NASCAR's 75th year that's why they uh, continued this project they took so much weight out of the car they built it to run 24 hours it saw the flag and you get the feeling when you speak to Jensen about the experience, Alice, that he just loved it. In fact, he loved it so much. He's thinking about a full-time return to racing next year. He, he, clearly, the bug has bitten once again. Yeah, he actually said when he was up in much older than single seat, I can't, I can't remember. So what Williams, it was, it was uh, Ross Williams. Williams. Uh, he actually said, I miss my NASCAR. So uh, giving the crowd plenty to see down there, doing some donuts, plenty of burnouts as well. And uh, you may, maybe, just maybe, Alex, we might see him take a full season, like you said, in NASCAR, but he wasn't giving any secrets away. <laughs> he is loving it. You can it. tell he's enjoying it. Look at that. He's having the time of his life out there. If you haven't seen it as well, dig out his interview after his first NASCAR Cup race at the Circuit of the Americas because he was a man who looked like he just got out of a pub brawl. He was astonished at the driving standards behind the wheel. He was back behind the wheel in that category in Chicago recently, but surely the highlight of his year, getting behind the wheel of this car in the experimental class of the uh, 100th centenary edition of Laurent and he is lighting up the last of the rubber outside our commentary box window. So yeah. much you can barely see him. I think there's going to be quite a competition between the three of them that were behind the wheel to eventually have ownership of this one and I don't think NASCAR will want to give it up at all. They are very very proud of what they did with that entry, the Hendrick Motorsports entry smell the rubber <laughs> ladies and gentlemen if you're, smell a Mulcom, the rubber. if you're a Malcolm corner you have no choice it is uh, a